Welcome to the Synthrider's Editor Basics tutorial. This editor is available for free on Steam and will cover the features of the current released version, sometimes referred to as the Production Editor. Its version number is 1.9.7. There will be links to resources in the description. Please be aware that making custom songs for your own use with a provided editor is legal and supported by the developer, but sharing and distributing those files which include a copy of the song is not. Click on Edit Mode, New Beat Map. Add the artist name and song title. Click on the magnifying glass which will open a window. Navigate to the location of your song and open it. The audio file format can be AUG or WAV, though I would recommend AUG due to the file size and minimal quality loss. Add your name or handle in the mapper field, then click on the Replace button to add a cover image. These are optional and you can always add one later. The picture size has a max of 512 by 512 pixels and the editor accepts JPEG or PNG files. Once you are done, click start. The first thing you should do when it loads is change your BPM. BPM is the beats per minute or tempo of a song. I use a tap tool to find it. Some mappers use a BPM detection tool. Some mappers search online and look for several different sources for a BPM and time each one out to see if it's right. If you're fairly good at keeping rhythm, I would recommend using a tap tool. If you are new to mapping, I highly recommend checking out Tebow's in-depth tutorial on how to edit audio for zero offset. There are a couple more great tutorials on editing audio using different techniques linked on the Mod Community Discord. It's important to note this because making sure you have the right BPM and that your music doesn't drift from a steady BPM before you start will save you a lot of headache in the future. Increasing the offset will push the audio and its spectrum further down the timeline. You can increase it by clicking the right arrow. Once it is close to a major division of the timeline, you can then fine tune it by left clicking in the offset box and entering a number. For example, if it is between 400 and 500 milliseconds, you could enter 450, and then continue having the number till you find the correct offset. An important note is that the pink peaks in the audio spectrum are not always accurate, and it's recommended to edit the audio for zero offset so you don't have to try and find it by ear. Now that you have your BPM and offset set, select the difficulty that you want to map. If you change your mind later, you can always copy and paste what you've done into another difficulty. You can copy a whole difficulty by holding Ctrl, then pressing A to select everything. Then while holding Ctrl, pressing C to copy it. Switch the difficulty by left clicking in the drop down box and then left clicking on the difficulty that you want. Once loaded, hold Ctrl and press V to paste. You should see all the notes successfully paste into the current difficulty. You can then go back to the other difficulty and use Ctrl A to select the whole difficulty and then the delete key to remove everything. Once you have your BPM, offset, and difficulty set, place a note by left clicking and then save the map. The next time you open your map you will see that draft mode is checked. Having draft mode on prevents scores from being posted while your map is unfinished. It's good etiquette to keep it on while your map is in progress to prevent creating a new leaderboard with every change to your map. When your friends or family come over and they playtest it for you, it also makes it really clear that it's not a finished product. So now that the preliminary steps are done, you are ready to map. If you just want to get going now, it's left click to place notes and left click on the note to delete. Or if you want to remove all notes on the current editor position, you can use the delete key. F1 will bring up a list of hotkeys. So happy mapping. You can set the playback speed here. When playback is active, you can use left or right arrow to change it in any camera view, or use A and D when in left, right, or default camera view. Step division allows you to place notes in between each major division or beat of the timeline. These are sometimes referred to as bars, though not to be confused with the sheet music definition which I believe is a certain number of beats per bar depending on the time signature. To change the step division, when playback is stopped, you can click on the arrows, use control and scroll wheel, or when in left, right, or default camera mode, left and right arrow, or A and D. You can toggle between two step settings with X. The button below the step division 
allows you to change which steps are included, fours, threes, or any. The editor currently does not support one-fifth or one-seventh steps. Music volume controls how loud the music is. SFX volume controls how loud the note hit sounds are. And if you have the scrolling sound set to tick, how loud that is. F9 to toggle through the options and turn it off. These buttons control your camera view. You can also use 5 through 8 on your keyboard to toggle them. You can reset the free camera's position by holding control and pressing 8. To move the free camera in this editor version, you can use WASD to move the camera and hold right click and drag the mouse to rotate the camera angle. F6 will let you change the movement speed of the free camera. Panning speed relates to WASD movement and rotation relates to holding right click and moving the mouse, which will change the camera angle speed. These tiny little buttons here, along with their default key bindings, are pause, play, spacebar. You can also reset to the played from position with control spacebar or R. Go to the start of the map, home button. Its counterpart is N, which takes you to the end of the map. Toggle metronome, M. Toggle comfort grid, G. You can also change the style of the comfort grid with control G. Toggle Audio Spectrum, F7, and Edit Key Bindings, F1. Then we have Save, Control s also saves, Back to the Menu, Escape, and Clear Beat Map, Control plus Delete Key. On the right side we have buttons to change note type. They can also be changed with the hotkeys 1, 2, 3, and 4 or middle mouse button. You can toggle the mode of middle mouse button with F5. It will switch between regular notes, specials, or all. Left click places notes. Left clicking on placed notes deletes them. You can delete a single editor plane with the delete key, or delete an area of notes by holding Z and scrolling to select an area, and then pressing the delete key. You can also remote delete any object by holding control and right clicking on the object. You can drag notes by holding alt and left click dragging on the note. To change the color of an already placed note, hold shift and then left click on the note. The color of your notes can be customized by clicking on the tiny paint palettes. F will mirror the current editor plane over the x-axis, or horizontally. This also works with area selection. Holding Ctrl and Alt while left-clicking on a note will create another note or rail in a mirrored position. F3 will toggle mirror mode, which allows you to place two notes at the same time. Y will toggle the position of the second note over the y-axis. The line button next to each note type lets you enter rail mode or long note mode, which can also be triggered with L. You need to have the color of the note you want for the rail already selected when using L. Left click will place your rail head and subsequent clicks will place rail nodes, also known as rail junctions. Clicking the button again or hitting L will exit the mode and place the rail as long as you have at least two nodes placed. If a note of that color already exists on that beat, you will have to click twice after entering rail mode, once to delete the existing note and once to place your rail head. Drag rail nodes by holding Alt and left click dragging on the node. You can move the rail head as well, but it will move the entire rail instead of just that point. Extend a rail or add another rail node by holding Ctrl and left clicking where you want the node while the same color note as the rail is selected. Shorten rails or delete rail nodes by holding Ctrl and right clicking on a rail node. Follow the comfort grid. It can be a good guide to use depending on the time between notes or the spacing that you want. Another method is freehand with snap to grid off. Control F3 to toggle it. 
try to make the distance between each note the same if your step or time between notes is consistent. You can also use onion skin to see a shadow of the last note placed to help guide you. Q will toggle onion skin. The more practice you get doing this, the easier it will become. If you want to make the movement consistent, but there is a gap in between notes, for example, you could place the whole spiral, then go back and remove the note where the gap is. The editor smooths rails for you, so that generally means that less points will have a smoother curve than trying to put too many points and drawing the whole curve manually, which is a common mistake for new mappers. As you gain more experience and experiment with how the editor handles rail smoothing, you will be able to control them in a way that you like. In order to be smooth, a long slow spiral may require less nodes than a small tight spiral in the same time frame. Placing rail nodes with snap to grid off may also help smooth your rail curves. Even small adjustments can help. Sometimes you can see visibly flat points where a curve is lacking, and sometimes you can see unintended motion as the rail moves past the camera. Since you can't place a rail and listen to the song at the same time, marker notes are a way around this. They can help you plot out the motion of your rail before you place it, or to adjust it after it has been placed. If I know I would like a rail to move to a certain place by a certain point in the song, for example, I might place a marker note, then place a rail using those notes. Once created, I would then go back and smooth between each set of marker notes. One last tip for rails and notes is that the difficulty, or more specifically the note jump speed, will slightly affect the final shape of the rail, as they get stretched out at higher note jump speeds, and therefore higher difficulties so they may look a little different in-game than the editor. Similarly, the BPM of your map affects the time between notes and rails. A half step at 100 BPM is the same amount of time as a whole step at 180 BPM, for example, so adjust accordingly when mapping. You can click on each button to place one of the specific shape that you want, or use Ctrl plus 1 through 6. Walls can be deleted in the same way that they are placed. You can move walls by holding Alt, then left-click dragging on the wall. If you want to rotate it, while you are Alt-left-clicking on the obstacle, hit Q or E to rotate. You can't place multiple walls on the same time position. However, you can make the illusion that they are by walking 1 64th of a step forward and placing another. Currently on Quest, walls of the same type closer than 50 milliseconds will be purged, leaving only the first wall. You can use FreeCam to help place your wall art. If you turn the FreeCam sideways with right-click drag, and then use A or D to move away from the editor plane, and then turn the camera back, you will have a bigger view of the walls that you are dragging away from the play space. To create a bookmark, you can click the bookmark button, or use 9 on the keyboard. B will let you jump to a specific bookmark. You can also use the square brackets to jump to the previous or next bookmark. Or just click on the bookmark node on the timeline. To delete a bookmark, simply press the bookmark button when next to the one that you want to delete. Flash effect will create a white flash in the game. Click on the flash button or use Ctrl 9 to toggle it. Dynamic lights activate all the reactive lights in the stage at once. Those are the lights that turn on in response to notes in the map. To toggle it, Control alt and left-click on the flash button. Be careful not to overuse these, as the flash effect and dynamic lights can be overwhelming even for people who aren't light-sensitive. Press F1 to bring up the hotkey list. Here you can rebind the hotkeys or turn off certain controls from appearing on the cheat sheet every time you press a related modifier key, which are Control, alt and shift. 
There is a commonly used hotkeys list linked in the description. If you're having trouble finding a hotkey, you can search that doc using Control F. There are a few helpful tips in there alongside the hotkeys as well. Any public beta features or updated features for the production version of the editor will be covered in another video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and happy mapping.